How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another Trusted Collectibles video. Today's video is going to be more on the collecting side of Y Shorts. I personally submitted uh, around 50 cards to CGC recently and I just got the box back and I want to crack it open with you guys and let's take a look together at it. And then I'll also go through some of my thoughts about grading uh, with CGC and grading in general. Uh, as well as the uh, the pricing and the turnaround times and all that good stuff. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So this box, uh, this box is the um, the econ no the standard submission that I submitted. Uh, I think I submitted around uh, at the end of last year, and uh, this is being recorded on the 20th of January. Um, so around three weeks time, uh, including when I sent it out, when they received it, and then also uh, when I got it back. Let's take a look. So this box actually came in a bigger box, and then this is just like the inner box. Um, and wow. So that's how it comes. Um, so it seems like there's a bunch of space dividers that they include, and then they include the slabs in the middle of the uh, dividers. So I guess um, let's just take them out one by one and take a look. Uh, I think I'll, what I'll do is I'll leave this on the side, and I'll just take them out one by one. All right, let's go. Um, so you can see on the back that I think uh, this is the uh, QR code and then the identification number for the card. Um, oh, there's a bit of dust there. I think yeah, it's probably pretty pretty. There's probably a bunch of particles in there, so I think that's a uh, kind of annoying. But as long as the slabs are safe, right? So yeah, the back it has the. Uh, uh, the serial code that's unique to this card and I believe that if you uh, go on CGC and then you look up the serial code you can find like the details of the card as well as I believe uh, they have scans for all the cards at least for at the very least they scan all my cards I'm not sure if they scan like literally every card but uh, that, that that is what they do and then I guess for this let's do it up so so you guys can see better so we have a journal uh, from the trial deck it, ha it got a three tens uh, but the surface got a nine um, so I'm gonna go over kind of my thoughts on like the labeling in journal uh, a, a bit later alongside my thoughts about everything else but for now I think it's just fine to just showcase all the cards okay we got a journal 9.5 Then, oh, here's our Perfect 10 Amelia. Uh, so I actually have gone over um, all of my slabs already uh, because uh, they let you see the scores and then they also let you see the scans of the cards uh, when they ship it out. Shipping took quite a bit, um, so I kind of just kind of couldn't wait and I just looked at all my scores and the, the, this Amelia is one of the, uh, the ones that I got a Perfect Quad 10 on. So... That's really awesome to see. Let's do it like that. Let's do it like that. Okay. Next, we have another Memory Snow Emilia. This one got a nine with a. It got an 8.5 on surface, which is unfortunate, but you know it is what it is. Um, and a recurring thing that I'm think that I think uh, you guys are going to see here is that they grade CGC grades the surface pretty uh, pretty strictly or they I think they just grade more pretty strictly overall uh, but surface uh, to my surprise has been one of the uh, harder ones at least for this batch and I'll, I'll let you guys uh, see the all the results I'll go through all the results uh, when I go finish going through the cards we have another Amelia this one got a two tens and two 9.5 so overall 9.5 so I guess I'll stack all the 9.5s and the 9s and the 10s. Okay, and then uh, another Amelia. This one got one 9, two 10s, and a 9.5. Put in the 9.5 stack. I have another Amelia. This one has two 9.5s, a 10, and a 9 on the edges. We have another Amelia. Two 10s, a 9.5, and a 9. 
So overall 9.5. And another Amelia. This one got a pristine 10, um, meaning that instead of the perfect 10 that we see here, uh, the perfect 10 is quad 10s, but the a pristine 10 has three 10s, and then it has one 9.5. So this one, I'll just put underneath the 10 stack. All right, let's move on. Next, we have a level one Megumin from the Konosuba movie series, and this one got a 9.5 uh, with two 9.5s and uh, two 10s. So 9.5 overall. We have another Megumin. This one got a nine because the, let's see, the surface was 8.5, while the other was 9.5s and one 10. So overall nine, we'll go, go ahead and put that there. So I think the moment you get like a 9.8.5, uh, uh, you automatically, even if you have like triple tens, uh, I think you automatically have to only get like at most a nine, uh, just because like that one subgrade that uh, is uh, worse. I think I don't think you can grade higher than like a 0.5 of like the lowest upgrade, if I uh, am correct. At least I think that's how BGS does it, and I think CGC is probably the same. Uh, though correct me if I'm wrong on that one. Okay. Next, we have Invitation to London Rin from Unlimited Blade Works volu uh, Volume 2 from the Fate series. We have a 9.5 overall, with one of the imperfections being the 9 on the edges. 9.5s and 10s otherwise. Okay. Next, we have Define Despair, which is from ReZero Volume 2. This is the SP Climax. And it got a... 9 overall with, uh, again, an 8.5 on centering. So if you guys, I think overall, uh, our 9 so far have all been um, because they got like an 8.5 on surface, I believe. Yep, all of them have an 8.5 on surface. So yeah, again, going back to that surface being pretty rough there. Let's make this layout a bit easier to understand. There we go. Okay, we can do something like this. So we separate the pristine tens from the perfect tens. Not that there's going to be that many perfect tens, but you know. All right, next we have the uh, Mesmerizing Water Goddess Aqua from Konosuba Volume 2. And this one got a 9.5. 9 on starting, 9.5s and tens on the others. I have a Shoko, level 3 healer from uh, Albuta, Rascal does not dream with Bunny Girl Senpai. 9 on centering, 9.5s and 10s on everything else. Another Shoko, 9 on centering, and then 9.5s uh, across, the uh, across the board on the surface, corners, and edges. So uh, there's going to be a lot, a lot of 9.5s. Uh, when I go over the data, you guys will see that it is overwhelmingly 9.5s. That, that is just the most common grade, um, I, I believe, for white cards, generally speaking. Another 9.5 for Shoko, this time with two 10s and two 9.5s. Another Shoko, this time again with two 9.5s and two 10s. So this one is basically identical to this one. They got the exact same subgrades. We have a Kaede from the same set, 9.5 with a 9 on the surface and 9.5s on everything else. Uh, we have an 8 here, uh, Kaede with an 8, the 7.5 on the surface, and 8 on the edges. Uh, so <laughs> this one was a, if I, so kind of just to explain, um, I kind of just threw a bunch of cards that I wanted to see in slabs in a box, and I sent to them. Obviously, I like protected, but uh, the point is I didn't really check a lot of the conditions, because I kind of just assumed everything was near mint when I bought them or pulled them. Uh, but I kind of forgot that I I, 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 um, I bought or traded for this card a, a while back. And um, it came with damage. And then the buy, the seller and I kind of reached an agreement. So I, ca I kept the card anyways. And then I just put it with my other Albuta cards. And I kind of just forgot about it. So yeah, this definitely has uh, damage. Let me s try to remember where the damage is. Besides kind of there's just being whitening on the... Um, on the corners and edges, that's kind of what like uh, I just got eight, but I believe there was also just like a crease somewhere. 
which uh, yeah, very very justifiable grade. Uh, I'm not surprised about this card at all now that I remember uh, seeing it for the for when I first got it. But we'll put this we'll put this here. We got a, this eight. I'm sorry, Kaide. Okay, next we have another Kaide. This one uh, nine point five. Two 9.5s and two 10s. Moving on, we have a Noroka from the same set. This one has two 10s and two 9.5s. So an all-bar 9.5. So yeah, the, the, the spectrum of getting 9.5s is really high because you can have two 10s and two 9.5s and it'll still be a 9.5. Or you can have, you know, like a, a 9, two 10s and a 9.5, that's a 9.5. Or three nine point fives and a nine. That's nine point five. So you can have a very large spectrum of subgrades, which will still average out to a nine point five. Which is why we have this fat stack here, so far, of just nine point fives. Moving on. Now I have another Nodoka. This one got a pristine ten, with the only nine point five being a surface. So I'm very happy about this one. Put that on the pristine ten stack. And we have the Ephemeral Existence PR well, from the Rascal Blu-ray set. This one got a 9.5, two 9.5s, and two 10s on subgrades. Put that there. This is the only non-ST that I submitted this time around. Next, we have the Secret Shoko from the same Albuta set. Got a 9 on surface and 10s on everything else. So I, as you guys can see here, this is another example of some uh, of a set of subgrades that can result in a 9.5. Got three 10s, but unfortunately we got a 9 on, again, the surface, and that does lower the score overall to a 9.5. Next we have another Secret Shoko. This time we have two 9.5s and two 9s for an overall 9. So when there's, a, when there's two... For example, when there's two 10s and there's two 9.5s, it'll default to the lower uh, grade. And then when there's, again, when there's two 9.5s and two 9s, it'll default to a 9. Next, we have another Shoko. This is a uh, 10, 9.5, 9.5, and 9. So again, it averaged out to a 9.5. Oh, wait, no, this is a 9. So we put this here. OK, I hope I didn't miss any 9s here. All right, next we have a Futaba. This one got a 9.5 overall with two 9.5s and two 10s. All right, we got a Koga Pristine 10 with the only 9.5 being on the edges. Put that there. Then we have a Blue Hair Made Rem with two 10s, a 9.5, and a 9 on the surface for an overall 9.5 grade. Next we have a 10 Amelia, pristine 10 with a 9.5 on just the surface and 10s on everything else. We have another Amelia, this time with two 9.5s and two 10s for an overall 9.5. Then we have a Bunny Girl uh, SP for my from the Rascal set. 9.5s across the board. Interestingly enough, not something that uh, I think uh, I saw a, a lot, uh, just quad 9.5s, but overall it is you know, still a 9.5. And this stack is getting quite large. All right, next we have another my, this time with three 9.5s and one 9 on the surface. Though since there are still 3.5s, uh, three 9.5s, the overall score is still a 9.5. Another mine, this time with two 9.5s and two 10s. So you really see the spectrum of the, uh, the different 9.5s you can get here. Next we have another mine, this time with three 9.5s and one 10. Okay, I think I'm gonna try to split this in half because this is getting quite tall. All right, let's do that. All right, so this is our 9.5 stack. Then we have our nines and our eights. All right, not too many to go. We just have a couple more. 
have a SSP, yeah, SSP Union from the Konosuba movie set. This one got a 9 because uh, the Surface got an 8.5, which is unfortunate, but again, uh, I think something I noticed was that the when there's like a one that's really off, uh, it usually is the Surface. So it does seem like CGS grates really harshly on, on Surface. All right, we have a pristine Tam Megumi SSP from the same Konosuba uh, Legends of Crimson movie set. This time, three tens and a 9.5 on Sanery. We'll go ahead and put that in the pristine 10 pile. And then finally, we have we got to our second perfect 10. This is a uh, spoiler. This is our this is our last perfect 10 uh, for this submission. We have the perfect 10. Megumin SSP from the Konosuba Legend of Crimson movie set. So I'll put that alongside the Emilia. I'm very happy that uh, two Takahashi Rie uh, signs signatures got these perfect tens. I'm a very, very big fan of our work and our characters. Next, we have a Trail Deck SP Yami from Two Love Root Darkness Second. This one got a 9.5 with two 9.5s and two tens as subgrades. Next, we have a Saber Altar from Heaven's Field Volume 1, The Drop Search. 9.5 overall with three 9.5s and one 10. We have the level 1 Rin from the same Volume 1 Heaven's Field set. 9.5 overall with two 9.5s and two 10s. We have a Kurumi from Fujimi Fantasia Bunko, 9.5 overall, with just one 10, and the others are all 9.5. Another Kurumi, this time with a pristine 10, so just a 9.5 on Saturday, with 10 on everything else. Very happy about the pristine 10 Kurumi. A 9.5 Kurumi, ooh, some... 9.5 with Surface 9, unfortunately, two 10s and a 9.5. And last but not least, this is going to be our final card, and it is another Kurumi. 9.5 overall with three 9.5s and one 10. And that does it for our submission. You can see that, that the box is empty. And then, actually in the same package, uh, I actually submitted uh, two more cards to CGC, though I had to put them under... Everything here was under the, um, the standard. Uh, tier, I think uh, a value declaration of a thousand or below, you can put it under a standard tier, and then they have like its own uh, workaround time. And then if it's over a thousand in declared value, you have to submit it under a higher tier. So this would be the express tier, I think, for cards up to ten thousand dollars. And I submitted two of my ephemeral existence mice, both of which got nines. This one got a 8.5 on surface, so ooh, really, really rough there. And then this one got a, which one is it? I can't quite see. 9, 9, 9.5, and 10. Uh, so for an overall grade of 9, since the 9s are predominant. So let's put those here. And that does it for my uh, submission for CGC for this time around. Um, I got pretty interested in grading with CGC when they first announced that they started accepting wash shorts uh, late last year uh, because I was getting kind of frustrated with BGS both in terms of uh, their pricing right now and also even though I like the aesthetics and the look of BGS quite a bit, um, I was really frustrated with their labeling or rather their mislabeling where I've had BGS slabs in the past where they were labeled with the wrong set and then the, the how they label cards are inconsistent. Uh, and then obviously the price tag of like almost $300 a card, uh, if you include like shipping and insurance and everything, is quite outrageous. Um, so I'm going to go over my experience with CGC and then I'm going to share with you guys uh, the pricing structure, the turnaround time, and then the submission experience and all that good stuff okay so let's first go over the oh let's let's go over the statistics okay so um, i submitted 40 there's 47 cards here uh overall i submitted 47 cards this time around and of the 47 
let's go over which subgrades got tens. Um, so of the forty-seven cards, eight, or let's go over the let's go over the overall grades and then also the subgrades. So of forty-seven, uh, eight of them got tens. Two of which were perfect tens. So we have the Kumi, the Megumin, the Emilia, Koga, Nodoka, Emilia, and then we have the perfect tens with the Memory Snow Emilia and then the movie Megumin. So we got eight total cards that were pristine 10 or higher, meaning three tens as subgrades and a 9.5 on the fourth one. 8 out of 47. And then next we have 31 9.5s. We have, as you guys can see here, this fat stack of uh, third of 9.5s. So there are 31 9.5s here. Again, the overwhelming majority being 9.5s because it there's a ton of ranges that can result in an overall 9.5 score. And then we have seven nines, and the nines are displayed here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We got the seven nines. And then the one unfortunate slip up where I kind of forgot that this card was damaged and this uh, this poor Kaide is the lone eight score. So it does seem like um, even with more strict companies like CGC, uh, unless there is pre uh, prior play and rough handling of the cards, if you pull cards straight out of pack and into sleeve, Generally speaking, you have a pretty good shot at at least a 9.5. Uh, sometimes cards, you know, depending on if they're, maybe they're trial deck cards and they're placed in the very back, they could have some issues out of package, and then maybe sometimes they're out of package, just not uh, not being able to get tens anyways. But overall, wise swords cards are very high quality, so I do think uh, with reasonable amount of care, uh, most cards should come 9.5 or higher. And then in terms of the subgrades, I think this is a really interesting one that I want to share with you guys. Uh, so I think most of us think that the hardest subgrade to get tens on is for wise is uh, centering. Centering has been the bane of a lot of black labels for BGS, where we see a ton of uh, tens, except you know, the, the one subgrade that isn't quite there is the surface or is the centering. But at least for this uh, sample size here that I have for you guys today, uh, centering is surprisingly not the least amount of tens that I got. So starting from the most to the least, uh, I have 36 cards here that got tens on corners, 27 that got tens on edges, 10 that had 10 on centering, and 8 that got tens on surface and as you guys recall there were a lot of lot of cards which had 8.5s on centering or 8.5s on surface nines on surface um, so this was the big reoccurring trend at least for my submission was that the surface was really what really uh, was more difficult at times and the centering i think i don't ever i don't think i ever received a centering that was worse than a nine. I think most of them were uh, 9.5s. And then we have the uh, the 10 cards that got tens on centerings. But the surface was really rough. The surface was really rough. Something I definitely didn't expect to see, uh, but it's good to know. Um, so that's uh, the statistics on my submission 47 cards total, the total number of uh, tens, 9.5s, and nines, and such, and then also the subgrade counts. As for the pricing of CGC, if you guys want to submit to CGC as of uh, this recording, uh, which is uh, you know, uh, near the end of January, to submit to CGC, you first have to sign up for a membership, which uh, does cost, cost money. They have different tiers of memberships. Uh, me personally, I just uh, signed up for the lowest tier. I think it's called like an associate tier, where it's a $25 annual subscription, and then you get, the, uh, you get access to be able to submit the cards to CGC for grading. They also give you like a $10 uh, discount for like their CGC supply store or something, but uh, and some other perks that aren't really relevant to myself personally. So for me, it was just kind of like a $25 entry fee to be able to submit cards to CGC. 
After that $25 entry fee, you have several different uh, tiers of submissions that you can send through. Um, they vary based on the speed and then the value of the card. So I think the lowest reasonable one, um, if you guys don't want to wait like an eternity, is like the economy. Economy uh, is $25 per card. And then uh, you can submit cards uh, that are up to $500 in value. And currently, they have a turnaround expected time of around a month. It's what they see on their website. Standard is what I submitted all these cards except for the mice. Uh, I submitted all of these cards under standard. Uh, obviously, a ton of these cards are under $500. But um, I kind of just wanted to make things a bit more simple since a good amount of these are over 500 so I just submitted everything here under the standard uh, uh, speed and it costs $35 per card instead of 25 for a standard submission you can submit cards up to $1,000 in value and then it's estimated to be around three ish weeks uh, on the website and then for Express these are cards that uh, are exceeding $1,000, uh, but below $10,000. And these are $60 per card. So the mines I submitted, they did cost $60 per card. Uh, so, and then on top of those base value fees, uh, you guys have noticed that all of these cards have subgrades. And the subgrades are not included in the base price. Uh, subgrades are additional $10 per card uh, on, any, uh, on any tier. So if you want to submit an economy card with subgrades, that would be 35 total, 25 plus 10. Standard would be 35 plus 10, and Express would be 60 plus 10. So we have here, uh, those are the great, uh, the, the, the prices. And then for Express, I believe it's around an eight day working day estimate. All these estimates are, are counting working days, so it doesn't count the weekends. And then it, I think it does also doesn't count if they have to go to like conventions and shows and stuff, if, they, if their staff needs to you know, be doing something else. So yeah, let's talk about the turnaround times because I did mention, you know, the estimated turnaround times, but they were actually uh, a bit different from the actual turnaround times. Uh, so on their website, you can see uh, they have a screen where you check these uh, estimation times about, uh, they say like opening packages the week of January 1st or something like that. Uh, so it kind of give you, gives you an, an idea of how backed up or how caught up they are in their submissions. So for my, I submitted everything in one box and you can do that. And what you have to do is you basically have to separate uh, the cards based on their tiers. And then you have to label them uh, pretty, uh, to, so, so that the, when they open your package, they know which, uh, which cards go in which tier and what they have to prioritize and whatnot. And then they will separate shipping based on the tiers. So I submitted everything in one box and then I labeled the mice. I, I put them in like pretty protective wrapping and then I wrote, you know, express because that's what they tell you to do. Uh, so the mice, uh, so I shipped them out uh, about late last year and everything was received uh, on the 28th of December. The mice were shipped out around a week after they received it, um, which is par for course for their estimate of eight business days. Honestly, it's a bit faster. Uh, curious thing though, um, they tell you um, every step of the process in which, you know, when they're opening it, they have it in storage, uh, when they grade it, and when they're, you know, uh, quality checking it, and then when they ship it out. Uh, this package of the My Express uh, service never actually made it to shipping, and I never got a tracking number. Um, so I kind of was wondering what happened because it was stuck in QC for what seemed to be like a week. But then like just one day, it just appeared on, in front of my doorstep. Uh, so I think that is kind of just, uh, they just forgot to update my my submission in terms of like the status of it. I didn't get a, your package was shipped out uh, email or anything like that, which I did get for the, the regular submission. But uh, it's a, uh, and maybe it's a bit daunting if you need, if you guys are you know want to know like exactly where your cards are. Um, but at the end of the day, I did receive them and I did receive them promptly, and I have no no big issues with what happened there. And then the economy, which was uh, uh, sorry the 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 standard, uh, which was expected to be around twenty two days is what it says, um, around three weeks, I believe 
was actually shipped out. I received it on the 28th and it was shipped out on the 7th of January. So if you account for like New Year's and like the days off they got for New Year's, this is actually quite a fast turnaround. Um, way faster than the three week estimate that they quote on the website, at least for this, uh, this particular submission. They shipped it out on the 7th and it was through priority shipping registered mail. Um, so with this experience, I learned that registered shipping takes a long, long, long time because they, they basically make the package go, th uh, uh, through everything manually, um, and a lot more secured. So basically if you are scared of uh, it potentially being lost in transit, because you know, it doesn't happen quite often, but you know, USPS can mess up every once in a while accidents can happen. Registered mail kind of, I won't, I don't want to say guarantee, but it does make sure uh, if you want peace of mind and you don't want mind waiting the extra time, registered mail is the way to go. And I think that's how CGC usually just does it. They do ship registered USPS. They shipped it on the 7th and I received it on the 19th. Uh, I live in California and they, they're in, man, I forget. I could be wrong on this. I think they're in Florida. Uh, I'm just. I think I want to say they're they're just on, on the other side of the country. Um, so normally with priority, you would probably expect it in around you know three, two, three, four days. You know, get give or take. Right. Right now, obviously, the pandemic and supply uh, issues. There's obviously you know a lot more variants. Um, but yeah. Uh, they shipped it out on the 7th and I received it around a week and change later. Uh, obviously, um, I was a, a bit concerned at first because I didn't understand the implications of using registered mail. Uh, but once I looked up what registered mail actually consisted of, I, I had no issues. And uh, it got to me uh, yesterday and I'm sharing it with you guys today. Uh, so that's basically what I wanted to go through in terms of uh, pricing and the statistics and then I just want to share briefly about my overall thoughts um, for let's let's talk about let's talk about the label let's talk about the aesthetic of of these CGC slabs so one thing that I really do like about CGC is that the information is very clear-cut and uh, well presented um, I do like the fact that uh, there's less errors <laughs> overall, though obviously you do see, for example, like uh, what English wise names can get quite long. So this I from the insane did get cut off uh, and it does go into the 9.5 gen mint area. Uh, let's see if we can find some others. I think this, no, this is fine. But all of these Kumis are the same. And then for long names, uh, unfortunately, they kind of do truncate some of them. Uh, I'm not sure whether or not this is because of the way I submit. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about this, the actual submission process. Uh, because another frustration I had with Beckett was you can't really submit Wise cards through their online form. It just isn't really possible because... Uh, I think their system is more catered towards sports cards, so they have like player name and like and, and like co code, um, which doesn't really work for Wise cards. So every time in the past that I've submitted cards to BGS, I've always printed out their 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 submission form on paper, and then I hand wrote everything out. Uh, so submitting through to BGS definitely is a bit more of a chore. Uh, while for CGC, uh, they do have a database for WISE. It's not quite complete, obviously, since they just started out. But they did have quite a lot of the cards that I wanted to submit already in their system. So all I had to do was, I, you know, I'd search up the name. And then if they do have a, a result, I just click on the result and that's that. They take care of everything else. Like I, if I search insane and beautiful and, and this card comes up, I just click it and then it fills in the rest of the information like the serial number and what setting came from and etc cetera, etc cetera. so and then you can just say like oh how many quantity you can just go like okay i want i want i want to submit four of these and it's a very very painless process for cards that they did not have in their system yet all i really did was that you could just submit um your own fields 
they did say like, okay, what set is this from? What year was it produced? What is the name of the card? And what is the, the what is the ID? And then what is the rarity of the card? So you can just submit it yourself. And then I think after that, they, they input it in their system. And then for future users, they can, they can use that as well. So that was very, very convenient. Um, one thing I did notice that was a bit of a small thing, but it is still something nonetheless that I want to point out is for example, because I was using that system where uh, if there was a pre uh, a, a listing already for the for said card, I just clicked on it without really checking to see if it, everything was precisely the way it was. So you see that the um, let's go with the uh, Mem Amelia first. So the, Amelia, the the name of the Amelia is quotation memory snow and quotation Amelia, right? And then on the actual label, it does say memory snow uh, in quotations, while the Megumin it says. For, I don't know if you guys can see this on the camera, but uh, yeah, it says foremost mage also in quotations, but then on the slab itself, it doesn't have the quotations. So I think this was just a product of um, when I submitted the card and I typed in foremost mage, the SSP did pop up in English. So I just selected that without much thought. And uh, I don't think that submission had the quotations in the name. So that's what happened. It was that, you know, it, it did come out like this where it is, Technically not accurate, but you know everyone that looks at the, at this card will like it. The, it's it's the card. So, so that's another thing. Um, overall, my impressions of CGC, uh, I am fairly happy uh, with the service, uh, the quality of the slabs, uh, how the slabs look. I am a big fan. Um, the packaging that they send back in, it, there's kind of like some particles of like wood and dust here, and then you kind of just have to like, maybe you just dust all your cards uh, or dust all your slabs, and that's what you have to do. But you know, as long as they're safe in transit, that's all okay with me. I do like the overall aesthetic of the CGC labels. Um, they don't have anything like the black label in terms of like uh, they 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 make the entire label another color or something like that. I do think that is a very big appeal of BGS labels in terms of the aesthetic is that the black labels definitely look very nice and since they are they are so hard to get it makes it all that much more special when you do get one whereas the the uh the cgc labels it's kind of just uh the only difference in terms of like aesthetics is like you have uh, black uh, numbers when you get like 9.5s and lower and then if you get tens and higher so you get the the gold letters and then depending on which kind of what kind of 10 you got you either have the pristine 10 or the perfect 10 and that's really the only difference, but honestly, I don't, I don't mind, I don't mind it at all. When I grade cards, I mostly care about the the protection of the card, and then as well as the just the grade, right? And then if the information is presentable, if 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 the information is presentable, and then the slab doesn't look like a mess, then then that's what I'm looking for, personally speaking. So in terms of that, I think CGC, as of right now, does have a pretty big edge, in my opinion, over BGS, mostly because of the presentation of information is a lot better, and then uh, uh, there's just a lot less inconsistencies. Um, and I do think that CGC is as strict, if not more strict, than BGS in certain times. Uh, I don't have a very big sample size of BGS slabs because I haven't really submitted that many prior to this submission like in the past i submitted a couple of my favorite cards uh but I, like those cards i meticulously looked over and i was like pretty sure they would get pretty decent scores so they all came back like 9.5 and 10s uh, without much issue so i'm not sure if like if i submitted this same lot to bgs if they would also show up with the same number of like you know 8.5 surfaces as like this lot did but at the very least i can be pretty uh, certain that CGC is very meticulous in their grading and pretty harsh on their grading. So, which makes me all the more happy that, you know, we did have a couple of these pristine tens and then two of these perfect tens, which kind of like, I don't know if people equate it to Black Label. I'm not too big on the grading thing. I don't know, like for other games, if like a CGC 10 can necessarily be compared to a Black Label 10, but at least in my eyes, based on what I've seen here, I think it can come pretty close. Um... And I think that's about all I wanted to say and talk about in terms of this particular uh, this particular submission of mine. Um, yeah, just a bunch of cards that I had uh, collected over the years, and I wanted to see I wanted to see their grades. I wanted to to slap them up, and it wasn't too expensive if you compare it to uh, like 
BGS prices, which are just astronomical and unreasonable. Um, I, I understand, you know, they, they have a ton of submissions, but uh, given that CGC is a pretty reputable company and they have had the reputation for quite a long time with like their, their comics and stuff, uh, I did feel safe in submitting to them. And I think they're their their the slabs look nice. I like the information presented, and uh, one of my biggest things is I want them to be strict. I want them to be, I want them to be very strict, and they were very strict, which makes getting these tens all the more worthwhile. Uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think uh, in the comments. Uh, oh, also one last thing. Uh, when we're talking about grading, right? Obviously, there's BGS and there's also PSA. Uh, personally, I don't like PSA at all uh, for grading wise. I think the slaps look really bad. Um, the P Z P the PSA label is not meant for Weiss cards because Weiss cards have really long names and the serial cards are all, the serial numbers are also really long. Uh, PSA also does seem to be just very a lot more lenient on uh, on on their grades. I've seen so many tens that are extremely off center um, that like I personally would not grade 10 just like even from a human eye point of view uh and then and then one big thing is also they don't have subgrades and i really really care about subgrades that's why i prefer bgs um when back when the options were bgs versus psa i prefer bgs uh but yeah cgc is kind of just like everything i was looking for uh for a to slab uh wise except it's better honestly uh than bgs just in terms of what i'm looking for so yeah, that's my uh, that's my submission for today. Uh, I mean, for for this round of submissions, maybe I'll submit some more in the future. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I've got a couple more cards that I kind of want to see in slaps, but maybe uh, I'll I'll sit on those for a bit. Uh, let me guys, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. You know, what are your thoughts on grading wise? You know, what company you prefer? How how uh, what are your experiences with these various companies? Let me know. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I will be more than happy to answer them as they come. But until then, this has been Mike on the Trust Us Collectibles channel and we will see you guys on the next one.